That first song you played today, the lead single, I, I, I've seen a little. Uh, you sing in the lyrics, it ain't what you've done, it's what you're going to do. Yeah. And uh, you said that the overall theme of this solo project is not resting on your one's laurels or being satisfied with what you, you've already accomplished. Uh, was that an epiphany, or is that something you've uh, always held as uh, words to live by? I, I think it's always about like my sort of wanderlust and my like desire to, to live every day for as many hours as I can stay awake. You know, I'd like to be the guy who lived the most and, you know, and whatever that means, uh, you know, the, the end of times will, will tell us. But the, I suppose, you know, the whole thing was, was about, you know, having an opportunity to do something that was different than what I've been doing in the past and left alone with a block of time, you know, what would I pursue? And, and, and you know, it, it was a mixture of travel and music. So I suppose those must be two of the most important things in my life still. So. It's the second reference you made today to wanting to. First, it was the hologram, and then you—you you, um, does mortality freak you out? Yep. Yeah, yeah I got a little boy who's five, so for it's, it, and it, it freaks you out in a way like. And some so much of this stuff, like there's a lot of fun stuff on the record, but I guess some of the songs are what I call them, kind of more mature songs about being forty, you know, and you realizing that your parents are a certain age and your your kid is a certain age, and you just you know you feel compelled to write about grown up stuff a little bit more than I might have been you know, in 1994 or whatever, but mm. it, it is an interesting time in your life being 40. It's, it feels like it's the first time in your life when stuff starts going away more than it starts appearing. I hear you. I feel like and we're in that middle point, right? It's a weird time. And, and like, yeah. I, I remember, you know, most of us and probably you, I, all of us, I suppose, we spend most of our late 20s and our 30s dreading having to go to so many weddings. <laughs> we go like, oh, I don't want to. And I swear, and then, you know, so many people getting divorced and so many people dying and so all this kind of stuff that, like, I remember last Christmas, two of my friends got married. Scott Grimes got married. You know, Scotty from, who played in Robin Hood with us, is great. And, and Alan Hocko, both got married. Yeah. And I went to both, and they were on different sides of the world, basically. One was in L.A. and one was in St. John's. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to go to a wedding. You know, so, you know, it was like <laughs> something being born is a, is a fantastic thing in a way that it wasn't probably 15 years ago. You know, it's just, so, yeah, it's, it's that kind of, you know. Grown up discussion, I suppose. Tell me about um, it's a very eclectic record as part of this new adventures thing. I mean, it, 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 musically, right? It yep. goes, it goes, uh, it, it travels as some country sounding songs, some rock rock songs, some more uh, traditional uh, kind of sounding songs that 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 might be more uh, associated with the, the Celtic side of what you've done in Great Big Sea in the past. Why was it okay to make this eccentric a record? Well, e eclectic a record. And eccentric as well at times. Uh, I don't really have an answer for it other than I didn't mean for it to be anything. And that was the point. I said, I'm going to go to Nashville and I'm going to write with Gordy and some of his friends and we're going to record music down there. And I hope it reflects the environment that I'm in. And I'm curious to see if I can run with those guys, see if I make a good Nashville sounding song. That'd be fun to experiment and see if I could do that. Same with Mike Post in L.A., like, you know, who's more of a score guy and an orchestral guy, and he knows, you know, he doesn't play the same kind of instruments I play, and he doesn't, you know, he plays primarily piano, and he's an orchestral arranger, so the chords are always weird and different, and mm. to see if I could live in that world and make it work, and then to go, you know, with some other more familiar people like Russell and Hoxley and, you know, Sean and Ron Hines and, you know, all those guys, that just about sort of a, a really free journey of having no goal in mind, I had no concept in mind, just wanted every day to be a fun day doing music. There's a long tradition of, of, of people, of artists, worrying about a sonic or thematic consistency in their mm -hmm. record that you might not find if you work with different folks and collaborators and producers in four, four or five different cities as you make your record. Did you worry about that? No. No, I really, really, really wanted to be very disparate, very different. And I, uh, the records I love the most the records that you know from song a to song b from one to ten you're in ten different musical worlds like there was a brilliant record from about i guess it's five or six years ago a willie nelson record i want to say it was called the great divide but i'm not sure where he does stuff with rob thomas he does stuff with santana he does stuff with all, all and it's it's just you know they're all just beautiful songs one is a country song one ends up being a reggae song one ends up being a, a jazzy kind of thing and i guess willie nelson is a great you know big hero of mine because you know we think of him as one thing but you do, you know, you turn the page and you realize that, you know, you know, Willie Nelson, you know, is, you know, for example, is, is responsible for some of the greatest jazz songs that jazz singers mm. play. And then and I just love discovering that stuff about heroes, you know, that they're 
the not one dimensional. The album is called The Great Divide. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's a really beautiful. Uh, I was thinking about you in this 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 tour you're doing, and even though you're well known in in um, Canada, especially at this point, um, you you have been part of Great Big C, and mm-hmm. there is a there's a security that comes with that. Um, and there's also a fan base that most <laughs> yeah. of whom want to you know uh, uh, see the band. I mean, look at even Noel and Liam Gallagher when they tour solo. You know, aren't playing arenas the way Oasis, Oasis would. They play in, in in smaller places. Whereas, do you get anxious about how your? Uh, I know the pre-sale for your tour sold out quickly, so that's going to help. But but do you get anxious about having to? sell Alan Doyle now as opposed to Great Big C, which you're used to? Only every minute, really. You know, <laughs> just just that, you know. Yes, of course, you know, you, you, you know, I mean, all that stuff for me about the tour defaults to something that I, I guess lived with me even before I played so many concerts with Great Big C, and that's like, when the doors open to a concert, I want every single person that comes through the door to have the greatest night of their life. That's what I want to happen. And... You know, I've I've said it all the time in the Great Big Sea guys. You know, it's like if 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 we sold out a hockey rink and it became apparent to us that the people for some reason uh, would have a better time if we stopped playing traditional music and did a plumbing show on stage, well, I'd I'd break out the soldering iron. And I'd that's say, that's really interesting because not all artists would say that. I know. You're really about the you the entertainer. You want to be showtime the entertainer. Is showtime and the greatest musicians and the greatest bands that I loved in my whole life. And we've been talking about Freddie Mercury like here today, and who's like one of the best musicians of our time, uh, you know, uh, those guys put on the greatest show you ever saw in your life. And I, I just can't help it. Like, I'm so compelled. Yeah, but some of your heroes too, like, uh, you know, Neil Young, mm-hmm. you know, he'll, he, he, he puts on a great show, but he'll do mm-hmm. what he wants to do. I know. <laughs> right? And, the, and like, I've seen lots of guys, you know, like Dylan and guys like that as well. And I envy and admire to a certain degree that kind of, um, I don't know, I guess disassociation or whatever you want to call mm. it with the event. Um, I'm more drawn to a concert experience put on by a guy like Bruce Springsteen who wants every last person in the room to feel a part of it. And, I gotcha. I, and you know, it, and I just, not that I think any less of guys who really couldn't care less, but the, I can't help it. I just, that's my, it's in my nature. So I want... You know, I want the shows. I want to give everyone a great night out. It's great to have you here, man. Congrats on the record. Have fun with it. Alan.